fancy, join me in the old study. A few dreams, and tonight we'll share the dreams of a vagabond, a man who traveled to all four corners of the world in search for a dream. The same sort of dreams that perhaps you have and that I have. And now, off to the South Seas and the Trail of the Vagabond. This is Don Blanding bringing you word pictures from my book, Vagabond's House. West of the sunset stands my house, there and east of the dawn. North to the Arctic runs my yard and south to the pole, my lawn. When I was a little boy, I saw a picture of a centaur and thought, that's the kind of man I want to be when I grow up. Uh, and that's the kind of man I am. I was going somewhere. My home is under my hat. I don't like shoes up on my feet. To be at ease is such a treat. So I do every walk I need. That's the Hawaiian and me. From the moment I first saw the Hawaiian Islands, I loved them. And ever since then, the word home has meant to me Hawaii, in spite of my restless vagabonding. So, this is something I picked up recently from Powell's books here in Portland. And it's actually a coloring book of some weird art deco era drawings by a guy named Don Blanding. And they're, as you can see, they're kind of Erte meets the Gibson girl. And... I've uh, discovered on Wikipedia that Blanding was kind of a famous poet in the pre-World War II period. He wrote a book called Vagabond's House, which went through something like 65 printings in 30 years. But he also created all the visuals for his books. And he's been all but forgotten today. I remember Blanding, especially the time my Hawaiian orchestra played in the Senegrel and the Roosevelt in Hollywood. Don lived in the hotel at the time, and he loved to come down and listen to our nostalgic songs of the islands. When I have a house, as I sometimes may, I'll shoot my fancy in every way. I'll fill it with things that have caught my eye in drifting from Iceland to Molokai of all the corners and all the nooks, of all my bookshelves and all my books, the great big tables and deep soft chairs, and a Chinese rug at the foot of the stairs. It was uh, on the advice of one of the newspaper executives I worked for that I combined some of my verses and included them in this little book, Vagabond's House. But the publishers weren't interested, so I published it with my own funds. The first edition of 2000 sold out so quickly that a Honolulu publisher then took over distributing it all over the country and uh, eventually the world. The roof of my house must have a rakish dip to shadowy eaves where the rain can drip in a damp, persistent, tuneful way the cheerful sound on a gloomy day and I want a shingle loose somewhere to wail like a banshee in despair when the wind is high and the storm gods race and I am snug by my fireplace the sound of the wind wails like a banshee in a drifting state it to scatter my driftwood place Flashes the sand like spite in my face. Welcome again to a quarter hour of history presented by KBND. This day we're very pleased to bring you the voice and personality of Don Blanding, widely known poet, 
writer, lecturer, and humorist. I was born and raised in Enid, Oklahoma. I had just finished high school in 1912, and my cousin brought me out to work in the bank. Well, it didn't take me long, and I didn't like banking, but I certainly liked the West. Was there much wildlife, by the way, around in the area in those days? Both in town and out of town, yes. Very wild. It was very prevalent. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for recreation back in those days? You no, just being alive was recreation. Oh, we uh, oh, had little amateur theatricals for little amateur plays. We were all young bucks. Great dreams. See, I wanted to be an illustrator and an artist, so I went on to the uh, Art Institute in Chicago. It was an exciting place. I was just a wet-haired kid then. I was considered very wet-haired and immature, which I was. And I remembered so vividly those early days. Got me ready for my big jump down to Polynesia, down to Prickly Heat Paradise. <laughs> oh, vast dreams were being dreamed then, and a lot of intestinal fortitude. Many of the loveliest songs of the islands are about the flowers of the different islands. Of course, the legends of the flower lays are simply endless. I can't believe it's May Day in Hawaii. We're going to talk a little bit about Beltane. Lay Day was founded in 1928. It was a writer that came up with the idea that this holiday should coincide with May the 1st, and it's continued from then on in. May Day is Lay Day in Hawaii, garlands of flowers everywhere. May Day is Lay Day in Hawaii. A day when everyone wears garlands of flowers to celebrate the spirit of aloha, so beautifully expressed in this unique holiday. Lay Day is Lay Day in Hawaii. Lay Day is Happy May Day there. I guess the big question is, uh, why did Blanding become such a lost figure? I think, on one hand, this kind of exotic fetishism from a white Western perspective had its heyday prior to the 1970s, but there's something really enigmatic, even decadent, about the drawings in this little book. They feel alive and modern, even though they're obviously vintage, and I can see why they were so popular in their day. But people still recite his poems, even now on social media. Today we're reading Don Blanding's Philanderer. Love me, love, but love me lightly. Weave no silken gauze to tie me. I acknowledge most contritely vows or bonds that irk and try me. How very simple life would be if only there were two of me. A restless me to drift and roam. A quiet me to stay at home. I've had five weeks of really roaring lecture tour and autograph parties. Just before I came up, uh, I was down in Los Angeles and my secretary said, you know, every time you get tired, Don, or weary of the city, you always talk about the mountains. And uh, why don't you go up and either get it into your system or get it out of your system? I said, that's a good idea. Not for all the lonely winding road that leads across the hill into the neverness beyond. And not for all the restless thrill of changing skies. Only for him who knows the ceaseless urge to go, ready to face that last dim misted trail with eager eyes and quiet muscles fail, thinking of death and just another place to go.
Fabric by Don Blanding. I try to live each day in such a way that when tomorrow makes today a yesterday, I will have woven into the fabric of my life some gay design, some patch of color, bright to please the eye, so that in the graying years to come, when all the quick responsive senses dull, I may look back across the patterns of my past and in my memory live the joys and pains of all my yesterdays. Thank you.